So, Dan Olds here, Callista Redmond, you are the current president yep. of the Open Power Foundation. Here we are at your Europe event. Yeah. How's it going? Well, so far it's been great. We had a packed house for our first day and a lot of folks have been uh, sticking around here now in day two as we uh, dive deep into uh, some of the progress that we're making, the opportunities that we have and the tools and resources and solutions that are coming out of the group. And that's the thing that's surprising me is, and I know you hate this term, but the ecosystem is there now. I mean, with more than 100,000 applications that people can run, that's a lot of applications. That's a lot of yeah. things people can do. Yeah, I think it speaks to the, the larger sense that it's not just one company investing in the future of this mm -hmm. platform, but it's many. And you know, when you look at our growth over the last three years from the original five founding members to you know, 275 today. 275, wow. 275, it's, it's a little good, bit right? of a meter that keeps okay. ticking forward each day. Um, you know, we've got a lot of folks that are rolling up their sleeves and really investing, and that's across the full spectrum. So we're not just attracting the, you know, the legions of hardware optimizations and, yeah. and providers on that end, but the software side as well. Well, so, that's the key, right? Yeah. For any successful new, new processor or new system, it's got to have the software. Yeah. And, that's how and, NVIDIA did it. And the full transparency of uh, the open power model mm -hmm. really allows those applications and workloads to fine tune and to uh, you know, take advantage of the underlying infrastructure. Without that, you're not able to achieve the magnitude improvements that you yeah. do. And that's quite an improvement with this new Minsky platform. Minsky is, Minsky is on fire. That's something. <laughs> the industry is loving Minsky. And, you know, it, we amazing. originally uh, envisioned Minsky would really uh, take off in the HPC field. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the level of analytics and the you know, level of uh, influence of uh, various uh, data pools, sure. uh, Minsky is taking off across all forms of analytics and, and really uh, starting to take hold in the enterprise space as well. And so... Do you think that that's primarily going into IBM legacy accounts or you're starting to pick up some new ones? I think folks are taking a much uh, a fresher look at mm -hmm. what power can do for their scale out as well as scale up workloads. Mm -hmm. And we're not just uh, you know reaching no. our install base. We're that's reaching important. far beyond that. And it's really the proof points that we can establish with the development community. You know, each of them go to work every day looking at the challenges in front of them. And if they can solve that and solve that in a meaningful and lasting way, um, they become the heroes. And it's the creating yeah. heroes out of that development community that really you know, gets us excited to go to work every day. Well, one heroic company was uh, Kinetica. I yeah. saw that presentation yeah. yesterday and that's going to be uh, recorded. It's been recorded. It will be uploaded. So you guys will be able to see it sitting there at home for the home audience. Um, <laughs> but geez, your numbers, Saturday they were morning up, cartoons the Saturday, for Kinetica. Like, yeah. Whatever you want to see, you know, watch some, some, uh, bring the whole family. Yeah. Bring the family, gather around the TV and watch us talk about open power and yeah. chips and stuff. But Kinetica was putting up stuff of near a thousand times faster by yeah. using accelerators yeah. in Minsky. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, it's that magnitude improvement that you've got to establish with the end users. It, it's a little bit of a, you know, an emotional decision if you're mm -hmm. going to transfer from one architecture to the other, but it's kind of a no-brainer and easy to get new religion if you get that level of improvement. Well, if you're it's, able it's to like, like it's a huge leapfrog change either. Forward. It's Linux. Yeah. I mean, it's just Linux and a lot of apps you just have to recompile and they'll run. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. And that's part of that emotional challenge, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, folks look at something like power and they're like, well, that sounds different than, you know, the, the legacy stuff that we've been running on. But really, it's not that hard. It's, you know, port, recompile. And then, oh, guess what? Because of this level of transparency, the number of dials that you can adjust have, has just, you know, leaped out of control. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's very cool. Now, um, so we talked about the, the legacy folks and you're getting in new net new customers and you're seeing a lot of that in enterprise, mm -hmm. not in HPC. I would have thought that HPC would be first too. So HPC has been first. Uh, the, mm -hmm. You know, the two key areas that we've seen the earliest adoption have been in your large scale out infrastructures, well, you know, the hyperscales, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, they're the guys who can, um, you know, custom design their workloads and their systems uh, around massive uh 
data centers. Mm -hmm. uh, second to that has been in uh, HPC, where you've got a lot of customization going on there too. Mm -hmm. Both of those sectors have that next wave right behind them of enterprise. Mm -hmm. I mean, every enterprise has some of their scale up needs, some of their deep thinking that needs to go on. But at the same time, there's not one client that doesn't have both an open strategy and a cloud strategy. And True. so once you start tapping into that larger scale out infrastructure, mm -hmm. and you start to pull information from both public and private, as well as hybrid clouds, and you want to do so while you know, protecting your crown jewels back on some of your own uh, on-prem systems, uh, you need to be able to pull all of that together in a seamless fashion. And you can do that when you start to sort of leverage the Linux and open source building blocks around it. Sure. So that's where we really start to pull things together and, you know, move industries forward using some of these analytics. Well, you know, that's really the interesting thing is that we've become, in the last, let's say, five to ten years, we've kind of been on Moore's Law, but it's kind of been, you know, 30% here, 20% yeah. there, 15% faster. Yeah. We've hit a plateau uh, we have Moore's hit, Law. We've, people would say we've been stagnating, mm -hmm. in fact. But then this thing comes along, and we're talking back in the, you know, 2x faster, 3x right. faster right. than existing solutions. Right. So just as um, every client will have a cloud strategy and an open strategy, mm -hmm. I think you're going to see that every systems provider is going to incorporate some level of acceleration into every system you see going forward. Yeah, there's you know you cannot rely on Moore's law and the CPU um, you know generation to achieve the price performance that you're looking for. You've got to offload some of that to acceleration. And you know what IBM has been showing us with the uh, power uh, roadmap, the Power mm -hmm. Nine roadmap, is that not only are we opening up those uh, that bus through CAPI and through NVLink for FPGA and GPU acceleration, we'll also have PCIe four coming out as well. So you know you've basically got three high high speed uh, connects to yeah. be able to you know really take advantage of that. And you're also, I mean, you're partners with two of the biggest offloaders in the world with NVIDIA offloading into GPUs and right. Mellanox offloading uh, from the CPU as well. Right. So that's a pretty good story when you put it all together. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, the, we're able to do a bit more of a composable system mm -hmm. so that you have multiple systems providers, integrators, solution providers that can go after the very specific geographies or industries. The workloads. That, right. They can each go after their sweet spot with something that fits rather than uh, you know, approach that with a system that's got a lot more bells and whistles than are really necessary, mm -hmm. because all of that takes investment and, and additional energy and, and other uh, resource to to put together. So, get the right system for the right workload. Yeah, and so it's been three years since yeah. you've been involved in this. Did you ever think it was going to get to this point? I think it's got a lot further to go. Oh, I think it does I, too. You know, if you look at some of the advances that are going on with open foundations across the spectrum, and you know, many folks, you know, sit back and scratch their head and say, like, "Oh, do we need another foundation?" Yes, we do in a lot mm -hmm. of ways. Um, with the way that technology is being consumed, from custom systems that you are, you know, getting directly in Taiwan to traditional systems providers to uh, the hybrid cloud approaches and the you know the cloud approach of of consuming technology in the first place. Mm -hmm. The only way to make all of this seamlessly fit together is by having those open building blocks. Yes, and interoperable. You've got to have it. And at the scenes. same time, yep. you know, look at container strategies too, mm -hmm. right? You've got to be able to protect and preserve and have the integrity around transactions uh, at every point in the process. Whether you're ingesting data from, you know, disparate locations because of the level of data that's being generated from phones and iPads and everything else. Mm -hmm. Um, to you know, pulling together information that was never really envisioned to you know come together in the past for business decision making. That's how industries change. That's how you see new business models develop. Uh, you know, whether it's in genomics because we can accelerate the speed of genome sequencing and make it more attainable across the field for um, medical purposes, Somebody for was talking agriculture purposes, about one day. Exactly. Genome sequencing. Exactly. And that is, wow. that's the type of stuff that changes industries, changes lives, changes the way that we you know, progress our society. Yeah. We've got that potential. But at the core of that, 
you've got to have more composable uh, systems, more composable ways of doing business to do that. And so, you know, you, you, your original question was, did you think that open power would get to this now. point? I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I've taken us on a side path to that one. So I did have uh, but a I question. But okay. I haven't forgotten. No, bring, it, um, bring us back. Bringing you back. So, you know, did I think that open power would get to this point this fast? Yes. I did. Really? And I think we've got a lot further to go. I think when you look at the level of infusion that we've had with our core sets of partners, our core invested partners, and as they start to become successful, in year three, we've gone from whiteboard idea yeah. to prototypes and PowerPoints mm -hmm. to production. Right, And in this production phase, it's important that we have real solutions making real difference to the customer set, and that's when others start to follow. And that's when you're gonna see now the level of adoption, those client testimonials and those stories are really gonna take off. And so I think we're about ready to hit a so growth, you don't think growth we've, spurt. We've quite hit the hockey stick. I yet. think we're I think we're teenagers at this point. Okay. I think we've got a, a you know a level to go yet and a, and, uh, and and we're well positioned to do that. I mean this is the right the right time, the right place and the right technology to do it. The industry is hungry for choice. Mm -hmm. The partners are hungry for choice, and that's the level of investment that's, that we see going on across the board. They're hungry for something that changes the equation yeah. today and gets them, breaks them out of that incremental improvement. Right, exactly. And it looks like it's you guys. Yeah, thanks. I think, I think you're right. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you very much for taking the time. You're welcome. It's my pleasure.